Welcome to the Vlogification Station! I'm CF History, and oh my gosh, it's been a long time since I did one of these, longer than usual, because, well, first of all, I decided that at last last week that I wouldn't really do these on the weekend so that it would give you a chance to unwind and give me a chance to unwind and kind of not worry about, you know, the end of the day, because it's, yeah, it's the weekend. Not really a time for doing, uh, you know, for worrying about scheduling things. I think, I feel like it's time to unwind. And, and, it snowed Monday and Tuesday. It was like, it was the first snow we've had, like, literally all year. We, it didn't snow in January. Last year, it snowed, like, in October, in November around here. And it snowed, and they just gave us a day off. And they gave us another day off. And, like, I kind of, like, feel, I feel like it's a long-standing thing with me that I feel like I'm, my generation is very lucky, and we don't realize it, like, at least I feel like I put things off, and then, for some reason, the universe goes, oh, you put that off, sure, you can just, like, you know, things will just work out, and I'm worried that, like, because things always seem to work out somehow, and I'm not saying, like, in all instances, but in things relating to school and homework, which I feel very blessed about, because, you know, that's one area of my life that I need a little bit of help with. Um, I feel like because it works out, eventually it'll catch up with me, which is gonna really suck, because later in my life is when I just, you know, I can't afford to have things not work out, or I would like to have things work out the way they do now. I'm looking at my face again, stop, stop looking at my face. So, yeah, that's, that's things that happens. Um, yeah, oh my gosh, I'm... You guys remember the, uh, the, uh, chocolate chips, uh, that joke, somebody made that pun, and, like, I thought of making it, but I decided not to because it was so bad. Those chocolate chips I ate, they were so, oh, uh, they were so delicious. But then, no, but then, the next day, um, the next day, we got, um, Twizzlers, they were green apple Twizzlers, and I was gonna do them in another taste test thing, but that didn't really work out. Because my mom and I ate them all. So sorry, but they were delicious. Trust, trust me to tell you, green apple Twizzlers, if you see them, go for it. They're delicious. Unless you don't like Twizzlers, which, I mean, why? Why don't you like Twizzlers? There's just some foods that you just, like, I can't understand. There's something, you know, like, f certain foods I just can't, and I had thought about this earlier. I can't understand people not liking them, like apples. How can you, like... If you have, like, say there's, like, the best apple ever. Some people don't like apples just because it's an apple, not because, like, the apple's bad. I mean, admittedly, I don't like bad apples. There's some bad apples. I was gonna make a, you know, no, I was gonna make a pun, but it didn't, it didn't work out. It was, like, like, those clips of people trying and failing to fly before the Wright Brothers. It, it just didn't work out. Somebody else probably could do it better than me, but I just don't have the brains right now to do that but n no some people just don't like apples because they're apples which i just i mean i i respect that but i just i can't understand it like how answer me this if you don't like apples tell me why you don't like apples because like why <sighs> i feel really insensitive in saying this but really it just it just bothers me that some people cannot like things like apples or oreos or peanut butter peanut butter i can get if you're allergic to it or like you know you knew someone who was allergic to it you know i mean like just sometimes when you know the, you know people who are allergic to it so you kind of you get that kind of that, ooh bad vibe from it um but yeah there's something like that today in history um so first of all it is as far as I can tell, unofficial noodle ring day. I don't know what a noodle ring is. I did not look up that in my research. Instead, I researched an incredible man whose birthday was today. Um, he's uh, I I looked him up and like you know, cause when when I looked down the list on my phone, the names don't really appear interesting. I mean, like, you know, there's some people that like you know you recognize and, but I learned something new today, which is something you should always try to do no matter what it is because you know, that's how you get interested. Oh my god, so much. I'll talk about the thing after after I tell you about this guy. Okay, remind me. Remind me. Remind me, remind me, remind me. I can feel I can feel your preemptive future telling powers or past in past 
influencing powers telling me to remember um after after I talk about this guy so I was looking at a list and I didn't see anybody that would really seem interesting enough to talk about which is something that I try to avoid because I want every day to be you know something special you know something interesting has happened but in trying to find that I looked up the first guy who's just who this guy's name caught me and I'm gonna I'm gonna spell it out for you his last name but his name is um you know let me just uh clear throat a little take a little bit of a sip of coffee nice a little bit cooler now because I sat here and played like tf2 while it was cooling it's better I, I've learned to deal with colder coffee more, which I suppose is an asset. This name is Alexander Solzhenitsyn. Well, let me try it again. Solzhenitsyn. His name is Alexander Solzhenitsyn. Full name, Alexander Isaevich Solzhenitsyn. This man was born today. This is his birthday. He was born in 1918, so he's about... two, two ninety ninety-five. He would be about 95. He's died, unfortunately. Very sad. He died of heart failure. Um, uh, 889. Uh, a couple years ago. Five years ago. No. What? No. What? Yeah. Yeah, he died five years ago. So today, today he's turning 95. He's, so he's 94 up until December the 11th. That makes sense now. Good job. Um, so, basically, this guy was pretty awesome. Reading about him, um, he, he's obviously, in case you, in case you have no concept, grasp of, of, you know, European, you know, Anglo, Anglo-Saxon names, he's, he's Russian. Um, he lived around the time of the USSR and Soviet Russia. I'm not gonna make. I keep moving. The, sorry, I keep moving the camera. I'm not gonna make a Soviet Russia joke because you know, I mean, for God's sakes. Um, he received a Nobel Prize in Literature for his contributions to the literary world. In that, many of his books raised awareness of, like he was, he was a, basically he was trying to protest against you know Soviet totalitarian, totalitarianism, and you know. Obviously, he succeeded because, you know, the Russian government honored him in his death. He wasn't like an act. He was exiled, but then he was allowed back into Russia after, you know, the whole Soviet era was over and stuff. And, um, some of his books include One in the Day, One Day in the Life of Ivan Denisov Denisovich, The First Circle Cancer War, The Gulag Archipelago, which was one of his most influential works, and The Red Wheel. So, he was a uh, novelist, a soldier, and a teacher. So, very, and he's got, he's got, he's got, like, a Michael Caine's face with Martin Van Buren's sideburns and an incredible beard. I don't even know, I don't know enough beards to compare this man. You know what, from after then, if I see a beard like this guy, I'll just compare it to the Solzhenitsyn Sol beard. We'll call it the Solzhenitsyn beard. It's like a ring around his face of incredible, but yeah. So that he that would be his birthday today. Unfortunately, again, he died of heart failure. But happy birthday to Alexander Solzhenitsyn. Solzhenitsyn. I'm just gonna be saying that for the rest of the evening. I know I am. So that's the thing. that's happened. Happy birthday to him. So the thing that I thought of. I recently started listening to the uh, Cox and Crender in the Cox and Crender in the morning podcast. Um, and they had one podcast that, I can't remember if it was the latest one, or, like, one of the really early ones, but they were talking about, because obviously Jesse Cox is a former teacher, they are talking about their opinions on public education. One of the main points, that, because, like, there was an article that, on uh, Yahoo that they brought up about, like, the ten signs of your student cheating, and they were all fairly obvious signs. I think we can all agree that, you know, if you're a student, you know, and some of them were kind of stupid. Some of them were, you know, fairly obvious, some of them were kind of stupid, but either way, it, it eventually developed into a discussion about, you know, why kids don't like school, essentially. And the answer, really, and I totally agree with their, you know, with their conclusion on this, is that because it's not interesting. That's the thing. I'm sure tons of people 
in my generation would be way more interested, like all the way back to the light in the back, interested in school, if it was stuff that they cared about or the teachers made them care about it. But the problem is, is like there's so much that a teacher, even if the teacher wants to, or you know, is you know, or in is trying to over you know get a student to be interested. There's so they've you know there's so many bad teachers. There's so much you know sort of stereotype society about you know being a tryhard. I th tangent here. I think tryhard is the stupidest derogatory term in the world. I just I, I do. I I th I cannot think of a reason to der to deride someone because they're trying. I, I I just think it's stupid. And I, I I'm kind of ranting a little bit here, but I really do. If a person's putting an effort, don't, you know, ride their butt about it. You don't need to, like, you know, give them the Nobel Peace Prize or congratulate them with a shake of the hand, but don't, you know, get on a guy about him wanting to succeed in something. It, just, it, it doesn't make sense to me, which maybe has something to do with the fact that I've always been brought up to, you know, that trying hard is really important, and if you're, you know, I'm... I say this kind of stuff a lot of time. I've been brought up with a very kind of internalized, strict sort of morals, really. And, you know, I kind of look at it from this outside perspective, but honestly, that's what I feel is that, you know, I do have these very strict morals, and it kind of honestly is an obstacle in interacting day to day with people that I know because very few people have the same moral code that I do, and that doesn't mean they're bad people, it just means, you know, I have strict a moral code, which doesn't make me a good person, and in fact, often, often it makes me an obnoxious person. But it just it, it it doesn't make sense to me. Either way, back to what I'm saying. There's so much of that kind of stuff where people, you know, are just like, you know, there's just negativity associated with learning and doing well because of that. That it doesn't that because of you know all these things that learning doesn't happen, you know, because, you know, there's such a negativity, negativity associated with being interested in stuff, you know, in school. I mean, to be perfectly honest, I think that some parts of American history are incredible, and I'm sure if people thought about it for a second, some parts of world history are incredible. But the thing is, people don't want to think about it. You know, students in my generation just, like, don't want to get interested, even though it's really interesting stuff, you know, like... Attila the Hun died of a nosebleed. That's pretty funny if you think about it. He he literally died because his nose bled. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I know I know it's one of these things. He either died of a nosebleed because he drowned in his own blood, or he bled. I think he drowned in his own blood, but I think he might have also bled out. I think I think it's more likely that he drowned in his own blood. That's pretty funny, I think. And if you know, but the thing is. It's not something that interests people, which is sad, honestly, because so much amazing and incredible stuff has happened. So, a little bit of a rant today. Um, jeez, I don't, I don't want all these to be rants. And I don't want this to turn into a thing where it's just, like, my opinions about why things are bad. That's one thing I want to stray away from. I always wanted to make this so that, I always want to do this to promote... To basically show people that there's something awesome in the world. Now, hopefully, in talking about our incredible Russian author over here and Attila the Hun dying of a nosebleed, hopefully, I brought a little bit of awesome and a little bit of learning into your life. I've actually totally forgotten that. What is his last? I feel so. I feel so good. I've forgotten his last name. What's his last name? His last name is Solzhenitsyn. So, to Mr. Solzhenitsyn, to Attila the Hun, and to all you out there, I doff my top.